on the website. Hello. If you're over there at modernbayaquarium.org, if you're there on Facebook, if you're there on Twitter and Periscope, if you're there on YouTube and they're on Twitch as well, thank you so much for tuning in. You're the best. And also, I just want to give a huge shout out over to Anthony there, who's in the background making sure that we sound good here during the show. So, uh, yeah, let's let's hop to it. I've got uh, about 20 pounds of food here uh, that's going to disappear very quickly. <laughs> and in fact, uh, I've been soaking here and <laughs> with these fish, so they're, they're very ready to go, as you can see there, Kristen. Yeah, we're getting everybody joining us online now, so we're so happy for those of you just tuning in. Again, my name's Kristen, and Patrick has so many different items of food. Um, what do you have today maybe to inspire our lunches? What are the fish so excited for? Well, uh, it's going to look like there's not a whole lot of food. It'll be gone instantaneously. So currently in the bucket, uh, before it gets molecularly upgraded to our fish here in the exhibit, I've got some chopped up squid. Ah! Got little nibbles there from some of the fish wishing that I would just keep feeding out. Chopped up squid, I've got little uh, bits of what are known as jill cubes, sort of like the asparagus or the broccoli, the greens there for the fish round out their diet. We've got some clam in here as well. Got some krill and uh, chopped up little bits of food. That was a, a silver side right there. So a uh, very little bit of a smorgasbord, a little bit of a chopino uh, in here. Lots of different uh, little bits of food here chopped up for the smaller mouths and then for the larger mouths. Let's see. Here, I've got my second bucket with the larger bits of food for the larger mouths. Here we've got a little bit of a white bait for one of our leopard sharks right there. So in this bucket, I'll also have some chopped up squid and some shrimp for the sharks as they come by. Yes, so we've got the big food for the big mouths, the small food for the small mouths. I think right now everyone is admiring those big mouths as we just had one of our leopard sharks take a whole squid. Here comes one of the boys and he, <laughs> okay, he wants the fish after all. Yeah, he was he was very excited. Um, I, I think there's also, you know, part of it when they're swimming along the window there is they can kind of see the reflection of the food there uh, on the window too. Yeah, so uh, hand feeding these leopard sharks here, this is actually my favorite part of the feeding show is when we get to hand feed those leopard sharks. We've talked about this before, Kristen, but in the wild, every time I've seen a leopard shark, it was either sleeping and wanted nothing to do with me, or it was awake and wanted nothing to do with me and decided to swim <laughs> away as, uh, as, ah! <laughs> Sorry, little pinky there. This little piggy got nipped by a surf perch. <laughs> yeah, not the sharks though, it's the other fish. No. I'm I'm gonna say that I know the sharks are a favorite. They're like puppies, they're right up by the window. But today I'm really enjoying our big colorful group of fish because when you throw out your handful of food, I feel like it's those two phase fireworks. You've got a handful of krill and clam that appears and then it's followed by an explosion of color when all the fish get there. Yeah, it, uh, explosion of color and uh, about to be explosion of colorful language as well <laughs> with them uh, coming over and taking little little nibbles there. You know, one thing you may have noticed, ah! <laughs> Uh, these these fish are just coming all over everywhere. I just uh, gave a little gave a little kiss there to a leopard shark I had not seen on the side. Yes, yes, you were right there in my blind spot. So uh, you can just see here just how, how how much mayhem there is. There's so many different fish species in here. Uh, over 30 different fish species that are all coming over to grab food, but we do try to give them individual attention. In particular, these leopard sharks that I'm hand feeding. This is how we ensure that we keep the peace here in the exhibit. Hand feeding the leopard sharks and the larger predators, make sure that they're not hungry enough to go after their tank mates. One thing you'll notice on the webcam, if you folks are watching the kelp cam most days, is that the giant sea bass, who's down over here on my lower left, she's being fed now during training sessions where uh, we're training her to swim into, right here, right here, there you go. We're training her to swim into, oh, we got the big male sheep head right there. There you go, buddy. Um, we're training her to swim over into a stretcher, which helps out with medical procedures that we might have to do. And so you won't see me feeding her anymore during this. But if you watch those webcams, and if you watch the rest of our webcams, you'll often see these training sessions happening with our fish here. So this is kind of just a broadcast throw up food, whoever's hungry, but we also do spend a lot of individual time with certain animals here to make sure that they're fit and healthy here at the aquarium. Yeah, it's a great way to get hands-on with those larger animals, especially these large, long 
long-lived animals. We can provide them with excellent care this way. Um, I do know that because we get to see this different behavior from animals who are used to working with people, it may make it hard to tell how they behave in the wild. Like we talked about our leopard sharks are normally shy and retiring. Um, how, about, how about the wild sharks when there's no people around? Right now they seem to be rubbing up against you, rubbing up against each other. Are they this social in the wild? No, that's a uh, good question. So leopard sharks are probably one of those shark species that are the most social at different times of year that you'll see out here along the coast. In particular, if you're down off of Southern California, uh, off of La Jolla Cove in uh, San Diego, uh, there are times of year there where there are just hundreds and hundreds of leopard sharks all gathering in the shallows. I believe that's related to uh, mating there. Um, but more often when you see a shark out here, like a small shark, ah! <laughs> just literally had, sorry, that was very loud. We just had a shark run directly into the microphone uh, speaker there on my on my ear, and now my left ear is ringing a little bit. Um, oh, sorry. Let me just feed the male sheep head right there. You go, buddy. Um, so the, the swell sharks that we have in here as well, they're a little bit more individual. Um, and that kind of goes for a lot of these different fish. They, they go between having uh, groups that they tend to swim together, like these opal eye you see right here with the white spot on the back. And if you could see real close, they'd have big blue eyes. You tend to see these swimming around in schools. You often see the perch here, like the used striped perch, usually in a pair. Uh, sometimes, a, well, usually there's like a female and then a couple of males following around. Uh, but then more individualistic fish in here too, like that big male sheephead you just saw there. He He's kind of swimming around, making sure that he's got the females in sight and kind of patrolling his little territory there. So lots of different family aggregations or group aggregations in here. Um, and uh, these senoritas you see right here are often in big groups swimming around together. So when you see all these animals here in front of you in the wild, uh, a lot of this behavior you're seeing right now is certainly not what you would see in the wild. You can see different uh, fish personalities out there in the cow forest occupying their respective niches. Yeah, now one group we know is always going to be social, whether or not they are being hand-fed, are the anchovies in the exhibit. So if you've been able to watch our different kelp angles uh, during the kelp forest, you've probably seen our school traveling together, and they are all about friends, hundreds, even thousands of individuals together. Uh, but they're not going to come close to a person. So so we always take care of them with a little bit of broadcast feeding off to the side. Right, yeah, they want nothing to do with my bubbly personality. So uh, my dive buddy is at the other end of uh, my air and communications cable right here. That's Jamie. Uh, Jamie is upstairs. He's got a bucket of krill that he'll be throwing in there to the surface. So if you see any uh, bits of pink raining down there from the top, those are little uh, shrimp-like crustaceans known as krill. Krill is one of the most important foods in the ocean. It's really tough if you're a krill out there because basically everything with a mouth big enough to eat krill is eating krill or ate something that ate you moments ago. And <laughs> krill is, uh, uh, some of the kids out there know whale food, but it's food for so many other organisms out there, including here at the aquarium with our anchovy school. Yeah, our anchovies are probably one of the smaller fish in this exhibit. Right now, the leopard sharks are one of the bigger ones. Of course, the giant sea bass is the biggest. Um, I know, Patrick, though, that fish are a little bit different from you and I, though, in terms of how big they get. We've got a question online about how big our leopard sharks grow and if they're full grown. But folks may not realize a shark and our other fish, like the giant sea bass, keep growing their entire lives. So it's a slow curve, not a sudden growth spurt and a stop like you and I do. Right, exactly. Yeah, there's. There's lots of different animals out there that have indeterminate growth as opposed to determinate growth, which is, you know, when when uh, you and I were born, Kristen, outside of a few epigenetic factors, we pretty much had our heights kind of set up there as far as how big we could uh, possibly get. Uh, I'm 6'1". I'm actually uh, about six inches taller than everybody else in my family, so I, I carried over some genes from, from a long time ago. But like you're saying, some of these fish in here, they can just pretty much keep going until until they they wrap up and uh, these leopard sharks to your point are not fully grown um, I'm not exactly sure what the what the biggest leopard shark ever out there was but I believe they, they can get to be over eight feet long uh, for the maximum size but you know we often talk about animals in terms of maximum size like a whale shark can be over 60 feet 
long or a great white can be 20 feet long, but that's, you know, that's the maximum. That's not the average for everything. So uh, for these animals, you know, six to seven feet long is pretty common for the largest ones, but these ones in here, about three to four feet long. And the bigger ones are in our Monterey Bay Habitats exhibit. If you folks turn over to our shark cam, that's where the largest leopard sharks are. And also the largest sharks that we have at the aquarium are the seven gill sharks that are on that cam too. Yeah, and working with these big animals is definitely exciting for our staff and I'm sure for all of you to watch at home. So watching these big sharks grow and measure them so we can study their growth is a lot of fun for us. Um, we definitely have been teaching the sharks to use training and we've been teaching our giant sea bass and other large animals so we can use training to make all of that easier. Uh, Patrick, I don't know if you have much personal experience with how hard it is to train a fish but I know that our positive reinforcement training works with things you might not imagine. All kinds of even invertebrates here at the aquarium are trained. Oh yeah, so you know, so many organisms out there are food motivated and uh, I'm sure you folks out there uh, uh, are yourselves or your friends are food motivated. Uh, and you can basically train just about anything with positive reinforcement to associate certain uh, targets uh, or symbols with feeding time. And so, I mean, my favorite fish at the aquarium that is trained, and thanks to the amazing work of Michael Howard and uh, the rest of the ocean sunfish team at the aquarium is the mola mola. So we sometimes have in the open sea exhibit, those animals are hand trained to come over and get fed directly from our staff because they wouldn't be able to compete with the tuna or the dorado that we have in the open sea exhibit. And mola molas have a brain about the size of a, of a walnut. So <laughs> you can train just about anything related to their to their food if you give them positive reinforcement. And I, I mean, you're currently looking at some crudely trained fish here, Kristen, where right. you see they're all right in front of my face because they know that I'm the target if they want to grab some, some food here. So that's certainly my favorite uh, animal training story is the ocean sunfish. Doesn't look like they got a whole lot computing when you look at them, but uh, they definitely know where their next meal is coming from. Yeah, it's a big motivator, and we know a lot of our animals in here, we kind of combine training with play. So for some of our animals, the positive reinforcement we use is food, and for others, it's a, a play session or it's toys. Yeah. Um, we definitely use a lot of that play with, for example, our sea otters, if you watch our sessions at 1.30. Uh, but what about fish? Patrick, in your experience, do you find the fish play or are playful? You know, I think it'd be really difficult to notice whether or not a fish is playing or playful because they're not super expressive. I feel like, you know, it's a little bit easier to tell when a dog is playing, when a cat is playing, and then when a crow or, uh, or a raven is playing because you can really kind of see that there's a certain joy related to that. But I would not put it past uh, fish to do certain things for pure enjoyment in particular. I would say that when you see uh, an ocean sunfish out there, I'm going to keep talking about mullahs because they're the best. When you see them uh, just rocket out of the water as they have done here at the aquarium, I've seen them on night events where the mullah just decides to breach out of the water. You know, I, I got to I gotta think that it must be a little bit of fun for, <laughs> for the sunfish to escape gravity and for a moment join its celestial beings up there in the atmosphere as a true sunfish before it crashes back into the ocean. I imagine there's a little bit of a thrill involved there as well. Uh, it seems very exciting. Now I know you're out of food, so we're going to wrap this up with a couple last questions from the internet. I know, uh, Patrick, most of the fish you've been feeding today are ray finned fish, yep. and I know that online with our social media, especially over on Twitch, we talk about ray finned versus lobe finned fish. Yes. Uh, well, we don't have uh, lobe finned fish here in the kelp forest. One of our viewers was looking at the shape of the shark's fins and wondering if sharks count as lobe fins. Oh, that's an excellent question. So, uh, yeah, all of the fish they see here in front of me. These are all Actinopterygians, uh, aka the ray finned fishes. So in these fins, sorry, I'm, 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 I'm trying to use one of you as a visual aid. So, <laughs> um, so in these fins here are little rays. In mm -hmm. there. And a lobed fin fish that is in this exhibit would be me with my appendages here. So this would be one lobe, another lobe. So four lobes there. 
Um, and so we are what are known as sarcopterygians, which include coelacanths and then all land-based tetrapods. So when you look at a shark, it is not a lobed fin fish. It's not a ray fin fish either. It's chondrichthyan. And uh, the lobe refers more to the specific type of structure and not the shape necessarily. But when you're looking at the shark, uh, it's very similar to the body plan that we end up having as well. We are all kind of in that fish family there where you've got your pectoral fins. So, you know, you think of your pecs. So, got my pectoral fins there. Same thing with this ras here. Same thing with the sharks. And then around their hips, they've got the pelvic fins or the equivalent to hips there. And then when you look at a fish, you're going to also add an anal fin, a dorsal fin, and a caudal fin. Uh, and so when you're looking at the shark there, the lobes that you may have seen, Kristen, are probably the claspers on the males that look like little little funnels, not true lobes. Uh, those are reproductive organs for the sharks there. The claspers are how you tell the males apart. Yep, great way to tell if you're watching on our cams here, the kelp forest from the shark cam, whether it's a girl or a boy. All right, well, I know we've done a great job feeding the animals, and that's the best way to make sure everyone in here gets along. We keep them well-fed so our fish like to get along here, but uh, we're wrapping up with today's food. If you'd like to see more feedings, we're going to feed on the um, aquarium website at 11 o'clock. We'll be feeding the open sea. But Patrick, is there anything you want to share with our audience before we wrap up in here? Yeah, just uh, two, two quick things. If you folks are watching the kelp forest cam throughout the day, and if you're... Uh, if you're really looking for an activity to occupy the rest of your day. Uh, Kristen, I don't know if you've ever seen the rock wrasse that's in this exhibit, but I just saw it for the first time today. Whoa! The rock wrasse looks exactly like a senorita wrasse right here, but uh -huh. it's more of a gray color and it's got a black bar on it. So if any of you folks out there are addicted to the kelp forest cam, one of the senoritas is not like the other, and if anyone can get a screenshot of it, uh, I don't know what the reward is, but uh, certainly my, 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 my gratefulness, uh, because I had never seen that fish in here before today, and I just caught a glimpse of it before we got started. So that's very exciting. So that's number one. Try to find the rock grass, everybody. And then number two is just a, a huge thank you to everybody out there who's been subscribing to our social media channels, who's been donating to the aquarium on our website, who's been participating in the education programs that are on our website as well. You folks are helping keep the aquarium going while we're currently closed, and uh, every little bit helps. So if you're financially able to, donations to the aquarium are really helping us out right now. And if uh, you are not financially able to, no worries. Just tell your friends to subscribe, like our posts, and uh, use uh, download our free education tools, whatever it is out there, keep spreading the aquarium love out there. We can't wait to see you all again soon here when we're able to reopen. Yes, and then we'll all be looking for the rock grass online and in person. Um, I had a chance to watch that fish while you were feeding a lot today, and I'm going to give you all a hint. There's an oddly bluish tint to the tip of the fins, but I think that black bar is a, the best giveaway. Yes. So, Patrick, it's been a blast. Thank you for giving us something fun to work on. Uh, everybody online, thank you so much for joining us. We can't wait to see you again in person. Thanks, everybody.